Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about Edwards syndrome or Crossone features. Edwards syndrome, which is also known as trisomy 18, is a genetic disorder in which there is an extra 18th chromosome. This extra chromosome leads to a variety of abnormalities in a fetus. We will compare the normal image of the fetus with features of trisomy 18, which are commonly seen. The image on the left is a normal image of the brain focusing on the choroid plexus. This is a normal choroid plexus. It is an echogenic structure located within the lateral ventricles. This is an image of a choroid plexus cyst. A choroid plexus cyst can be associated with trisomy 18 if other features are also seen. If it is an isolated finding, it is less likely to be associated with Edwards syndrome and usually resolves on its own. There is an anechoic cyst within the choroid plexus. The cyst will have hyperechoic walls and it is usually oval shaped. The next feature is a strawberry shaped skull. The image on the left is a normal fetal skull. It has a rounded shape. In a strawberry shaped skull, there is flattening of the occipital bone. The occipital bone is flat. This feature is also associated with trisomy 18. This is another image of a strawberry shaped skull. Flattening of the frontal bones can also occur along with flattening of the occipital bone, which gives a strawberry shaped skull. Posterior fossa of the brain can also be affected by Edwards syndrome. Cisterna magna is a fluid filled space behind the cerebellum. This anechoic space behind the cerebellum is cisterna magna. Normally, it should not measure more than 10 millimeters. A measurement below 10 millimeters is normal. In mega cisterna magna, this cisterna magna measurement will be more than 10 millimeters and is considered abnormal. Dandy Walker malformation is an abnormality affecting the posterior fossa. Mega cisterna magna is also a feature of Dandy Walker malformation. There is an enlarged anechoic posterior fossa due to hypoplasia or aplasia of the cerebellar vermis. The cerebellar vermis is the central constricted part which connects both the cerebellar hemispheres to each other. This vermis is absent or is not developed properly which leads to a fluid filled anechoic posterior fossa and can also lead to mega cisterna magna. This is another image of Dandy Walker malformation. We see an enlarged anechoic posterior fossa. The fourth ventricle is also dilated. Dandy Walker malformation is usually associated with trisomy 18 if other features are also present. Spinal defects are also seen. The image on the left is a sagittal view of a normal fetal spine. The image on the right shows a myelomeningocele. In a myelomeningocele, there is a defect in the spine, which leads to protrusion or herniation of spinal contents through this defect, and it forms a myelomeningocele. The herniated contents are in a sac. 
this is a visible sac which is protruding from the spinal defect. So this is a myelomeningocele and is known to be associated with Edwards syndrome. This is another image of a myelomeningocele. It commonly affects the lumbar region, although any region of the spine can be affected. This is a visible sac protruding from the spinal defect. Cardiac defects are also seen in a fetus with Edwards syndrome. The image on the left shows a normal heart. These are the right and left atria. And you can see a small wall between the right and left atrium. This is the interatrial septum. There's a small hole over here. This is normal in a fetus. It is called foramen ovale. This small hole is not an atrial septal defect. The image on the right shows an atrial septal defect. We see no small wall between the right and left atria. The interatrial septum is absent. So this is an atrial septal defect. The septum or wall between the right and left ventricle is the interventricular septum. This is how it appears normally. In a ventricular septal defect, there is a hole or a defect in this interventricular septum. This is the defect. This defect can be associated with Edwards syndrome. This is an image of a normal corpus callosum in sagittal view. Corpus callosum connects the right and left hemispheres of the brain. In agenesis of corpus callosum, the corpus callosum is absent. It can lead to a dilated third ventricle and gives an abnormal appearance. The normal measurement of natural ventricle is less than 10 millimeters. Colpocephaly is a term given to a teardrop shaped dilated lateral ventricle. This ventricle has a specific teardrop shape. This is also a feature of agenesis of corpus callosum. A fetus with Edwards syndrome may have abdominal defects as well. The image on the left is of a normal fetal abdomen in sagittal view. Omphalocele is a term given to a midline abdominal wall defect. This midline abdominal wall defect leads to protrusion of abdominal contents such as bowel and even the liver. Usually it is bowel. Hyperechoic bowel is seen protruding through this defect, forming a sac. This sac is covered by a membrane. This is another image of an fellow seal. We can see protrusion of hyperechoic bowel and a membrane can also be seen. In esophageal atresia, there is absence of a normal esophagus. On ultrasound, there will be persistent non-visualization of stomach or a small stomach is seen with associated polyhydramnios, which is abnormally increased amount of amniotic fluid. Normally, this is how a stomach appears a rounded anechoic structure, but in this image, we do not see the stomach. The constant non-visualization of stomach with polyhydramnios is a sign of esophageal atresia. In congenital diaphragmatic hernia, there is herniation of abdominal contents into the thoracic cavity through a defect in the diaphragm. Usually it involves the stomach 
in the thoracic cavity, but other organs can also be seen such as liver or bowel. In this image, we see the stomach right next to the heart because the stomach has herniated through a defect in the diaphragm. Due to this herniation, there is mediastinal shift. The heart is displaced to the right side. This is another image of a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. There is herniation of the liver and bowel into the thoracic cavity. The stomach appears anechoic. The liver can appear slightly hypoechoic and homogeneous, and the bowel usually appear hyperechoic and heterogeneous. A clenched hand is more commonly seen in Edwards syndrome. The hands will appear to be folded with overlapping fingers and will constantly have this position. The normal hand will appear like this. We can distinctly see the fingers, the thumb, and the arm in their normal positions. But over here, they have an abnormal shape and position. This is another image showing a clenched hand. We can see overlapping fingers and the hand is folded. Radial array anomaly refers to absence or hypoplasia of the radius. The radius may be absent. In this image, along with clenched hands, we see absence of the radius. Only one bone is present in the forearm, whereas in the normal image, we will see two bones, the radius and ulna. This image is showing radial ray anomaly and clenched hand. Only a single bone is present in the forearm. The hand has an abnormal folded appearance. Usually the radius is absent if a single bone is seen in the forearm. Limb reduction defects are often associated with Edwards syndrome. Absence or reduction in size of any long bone can occur. The image on the left shows a normal leg and foot. Both the tibia and the fibula can be seen. The image on the right shows a femur without the presence of tibia and fibula. Both tibia and fibula are absent and an abnormal foot is arising from the femur. In a club foot, there is abnormal positioning of the foot. The foot appears turned inwards and downwards, and there will be persistence of this abnormal position. This foot position will never change. This type of fixed position is termed club foot and can be seen in a fetus with trisomy 18. The normal shape of the sole is either flat or slightly concave. In our upper bottom foot, the sole of the foot will have a convex shape. The sole is bulging outwards instead of being flat or slightly concave. This type of foot appearance is termed rocker bottom foot and can be associated with trisomy 18. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.